We often cite Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum as the puppet masters. After all, they openly brag about infiltrating governments around the world. What we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brez of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. But what if Klaus is just a puppet? Schwab openly admits that Henry Kissinger was his mentor. You said when you came here, it transformed your life. Was there a course, a professor, who really made that difference for you? Yes, uh, there was um, one course, one seminar of um, Henry Kissinger, um, which really opened my eyes. I wasn't accepted to the seminar, but I sat in. I think he let me in because I was German. And, uh, and it was relatively shortly after the war, there were not too many Germans here. And uh, this created a friendship which has um, uh, endured until today. And uh, you know, uh, Henry has been several times in, in Davos. And David Rockefeller openly admits that he discovered Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger, and I think he first uh, was noticed by the Rockefeller family after he um, wrote a um, a very erudite work on uh, nuclear weapons and nuclear war back in the late 1950s. Nuclear Wilson's and foreign policy. Right. Was doing, yes. It was then published, and uh, from that time on, he became uh, pretty close to the Rockefeller family. Well, he did. Um, actually, I guess I was the first one who got to know him because uh, he was a member of an organization called the Council on Foreign Relations in New York. Rockefeller also founded the Council on Foreign Relations, an American think tank, which seems to have had significant influence on official U.S. policy over the last several decades. And in my opinion, the World Economic Forum is the equivalent of the Council on Foreign Relations, but on a global scale. Now, right now, the most powerful and influential people in the world are on their way to Davos to decide and dictate the future of humanity for us without our say or consent. So the question is, if the puppet masters are actually themselves puppets, who is really pulling the string? Now, that was Spiro, and he has done many great videos to bring the truth to the forefront by going into back into the past and showing you what people are doing and saying and as we look at the Federal Reserve Act, we're going to go back a little bit in time to look at the progression of time, bringing us in the truth of today, as we see on December 23rd, 1913, is when the Federal Reserve Bank was set up and the Federal Reserve Act was passed into law. Now, they are a privatized banking institution. Their sole purpose is to make money by way of lending money, and much of that money they lend is to our own U.S. government, which you can look at the deficit as it is now at $30 trillion. Now, many of the same people that pushed and lobbied to set up the Federal Reserve uh, System, the Re Federal Reserve Act, were also the same people involved in setting up and bringing the Council of Foreign Relations into existence and and it was founded in 1921, a few years later. And you're going to find as we move forward that their sole purpose was to control the media of the day for the entire United States of America as we get into the history of them moving forward. We are over on the CFR.org members, corporate members page, and we're going to take a look at who the corporate members are of the CFR. As we see corporate program, corporate members, this list is current as of February 17th, 2023. And the interesting thing is here they have their founders listed as Apple, Bank of America, BlackRock, and right in the middle, J.P. Morgan Chase & Co., Goldman Sachs. Uh, you can check this out for yourself. Facebook and, of course, Google, which controls YouTube, PepsiCo, Moody's, and Bear is a in the president's circle bear bought monsanto and the list goes on and on it's a long list of very influential companies and corporations throughout the united states of america and now if you will let's go into a true factual history of the council on foreign relations <laughs> The year is 1917. 
and Representative Oscar Calloway enters a disturbing statement into the U.S. congressional record. The statement reveals why J.P. Morgan interests hired 12 high-ranking news managers. The 12 were asked to determine the most influential newspapers in America. They were to figure out how many news organizations it would take to control generally the policy of the daily press of the United States. The 12 found it was only necessary to purchase the control of 25 of the greatest papers. An agreement was reached. The policy of the papers was bought and an editor was placed at each paper to ensure that all published information was in keeping with the new policy. Soon, that policy would be defined by a front group formed by J.P. Morgan and his colleagues. In fact, Morgan's personal attorney was founding president of the organization, the Council on Foreign Relations. Today, the CFR maintains that its goal is to increase America's understanding of the world. However, the actual objective of this highly exclusive club is revealed by the rare admissions of the insiders themselves. In the early 60s, a Georgetown University professor collects information for a book favorable to the network of powerful men who founded the CFR. For two years, Professor Carol Quigley is allowed to examine the confidential papers and secret records of this network. Quigley reveals that these men aim to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. In short, they seek total and quiet control of the entire world. And the CFR is their most visible conduit for carrying out that agenda. CFR members include America's wealthiest tycoons, as well as the highly placed elite in government, academic institutions, tax-exempt foundations, and the establishment media. Ruling Class Journalists, written by Richard Harwood, describes the CFR membership as the ruling establishment in the United States. The Washington Post article boasted that news reporters who are CFR members do not merely analyze and interpret foreign policy for the United States, they help make it. Who are these policymakers? Many of their faces are familiar. NBC's Tom Brokaw, CBS's Dan Rather, ABC's Barbara Walters, Jim Lehrer of PBS, William F. Buckley of National Review, media mogul Rupert Murdoch, owner of the giant multifaceted news corporation. These media heavyweights, and many others like them, are members of the CFR. Powerful corporations are also invited to become members. At the close of the 20th century, CFR influence presided over far-reaching consolidations of media control. In 1995, CFR members Michael Eisner of Disney and ABC's Thomas Murphy merged their media empires. Soon after the merger, the Disney-ABC empire becomes a CFR corporate member. In the year 2000, the world's largest internet service provider, America Online, joins forces with Time Warner, one of the world's largest news organizations. The CEOs favoring the move are CNN's Thomas Johnson and Time Warner's Gerald Levin, both CFR members. Once again, another media giant is created under the shadow of CFR influence. Today, an elite handful of individuals define the agendas that are supported by the empire of establishment news. It's a young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, half of this government, are actually young noble leaders of the world. Right. So we penetrate the cabinets. The change is not just happening. The change can be shaped by us. We have to prepare for a more angry world. How to prepare to take the necessary action to create a fairer world. I see the need for a great reset. So people assume we are just going back to the good old world which we had and everything will be normal again. 
this is, uh, let's say, fiction, it will not happen. There is only one way this pandemic is going to go. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. And the last factor I want to mention is resilience, the capability to bounce back, because there will be certainly what we call the black swans, the unpleasant surprises which will come in our way. So, Minister, dear participants, I wish you a very good meeting. And just as a last point, I want to say the most important factor to master the future is leadership. And for me, I have my own definition. Leadership comprises five dimensions. Soul, brain, heart, muscles, and good nerves. Let me explain. Soul stands for purpose, for ambition. Brains for professionalism, for permanently upgrading your capabilities. Heart for passion. We have to be passionate about what we are doing, otherwise we will fail. Muscles for the capability to translate our vision into action, into impact. And good nerves to have the resilience to withstand all the difficult situations. So I wish you soul, brain, heart, muscles, and good nerves. Thank you. I'm going to end this video with a full reading of Revelations 13, where it talks about the mark, the name, and the number of the beast where we read here, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand, that would be the working class, or in their foreheads, that would be the leadership class. And no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, the number of his name will lead you to the character of the beast. And here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. Now, a score is 20, so that would be 666. Now, you're going to get the name of the beast right here in the very beginning of Revelations 13 when we start this read. And his name is Blasphemy. Answer me this. If God says he created man in six days, created the world and man in, in six days. The fullness of creation was uh, completed. But then we send our children to schools that teach the theory of evolution. But then that morphs into teaching the theory of evolution as a fact. And in academia, once you get to college, if you uh, speak to many professors in regards to your belief in creation, they will actually downgrade you because you don't go along with the belief 
that evolution is fact. And do you not think that to call, call God the Father a liar in regards to when it comes to creation versus evolution, and you say, I believe evolution and not your word on creation, that would be blasphemy that we are teaching that in our schools from kindergarten through college. And if you want to know the image of the beast, ask uh, your favorite AI bot, was man created or did man evolve? Okay, that's the origin of our existence. It should be a very important question. So you understand that the image of the beast that speaks is not a statue that's going to be talking, but it is basically AI that's going to tell human beings how we ought to be living. And when the time comes, when Antichrist reveals himself and the fallen angels reveal themselves, who do you think will be the first ones to fall to their lie when they say that they are our creators? Yes, they are fallen angels. They are not uh, aliens. They have been around for a long, long time. And you will find that they themselves will call themselves our creators. But those that believe in creation will not fall for their life, for they will know them for who they are. But those that believe in evolution will say, I have been wrong all these years. We did not evolve, but these are our creators, and they will embrace them around the globe. As for the character of the beast, 666. This number, of uh, the mathematics of it, when you do calculate the number of this beast, it's amazing. It leads you to a man that never knew war. All the kingdoms of the world loved him. He built idols to false gods and allowed his many wives to worship them as he also started to worship them. And because of all that he did, he wound up dividing the nation of Israel. In a future video, I will show you the simplistic math and how you can use scripture to come to the conclusion of how this number and the wisdom of this number will lead you to understanding what the character of the beast is going to be like. So listen closely as we do the full reading of Revelations 13. Now I pray that our Heavenly Father God creator of all that is, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh and fulfilled all the law and prophets, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, of which Jesus Christ sent down to renew our very mind, heart, and souls that leadeth us into all truth. May the blessings rain down from heaven to give you knowledge, understanding, and wisdom as we read Revelations chapter 13, for we are now in these very last end times. Revelation 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. 
and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six.